An abstract class is a class definition that's incomplete. It's incomplete in the sense that some methods are defined as part of the class, but the inner workings, the body of the methods, are not provided. To create an abstract class, you need to name the parts that are not defined. Just don't include their definition. Don't include the bodies for these methods. And it only takes one method without a body to make an abstract class. You cannot create an object from an abstract class. The plan is simply not complete, so no object can possibly be constructed. An abstract class contains at least one method that doesn't have a body defined for it, so there's no way it could be executed. When you write an abstract class, you must declare it as abstract, or the compiler just thinks the missing method body is an error and flags it that way, and it won't compile. The only thing you can do with an abstract class is make it the superclass of another class. It's in this subclass that the body of the method is then defined. If the body of the method is not defined in the subclass, then the subclass is also an abstract class and has to be declared that way. This is one of the things that people ask about. What good is an abstract class? And it's a good question. Well, it's nothing more than a design tool. It allows you to classify things. Let me use the fan analogy again. You could have an abstract class called fan. This class could declare a method for turning the fan on and off, but not define the exact procedure for doing so. Then you could extend the fan class into table fan and put an on-off switch on the base of the fan body itself. Or you could extend the fan class into ceiling fan, and the on-off switch could be a thermostat on the wall. The ultimate abstract class actually isn't a class at all. It's an interface, and I'll talk about that in the next lesson.